booktube my name is Kate and this is my channel chapter Kate today I'm going to be talking about my favorite side or bit characters in books so characters that are not the protagonist and not necessarily related to the main storyline things like that characters that are kind of more average in books now this topic actually came to mind because I was attending or viewing the um, darker shade of magic live show um, primarily hosted by Spencer from Common Spence and a lot of people in the chat we mentioned Ned um, as a character that we were asking about in this in the book and um, Ned is a very average character and a lot of the people in the panel were like who's Ned and I was slightly pained that we were sleeping on Ned like that a little offended because Ned is a beautiful being and then I got myself, you know, kind of thinking, what is it about Ned that made me love him so much? So, we're going to just jump right into that. We're going to jump right in with Ned. So, Ned in the Darker Shade of Magic trilogy, I've only read the first two, and I'm not going to get super spoilery with this at all because there's not really much spoilery stuff because Ned is very average. So, Ned is a person that lives in Grey London. If you've read the series, there are several Londons, and Grey London is basically our world. There's not really any magic there. However, there are certain people, and if you look on Ned's wiki page, it says that he's an enthusiast. So, he is somebody who likes to try and find magic. He likes to try and find magical items. He's fascinated by magic. And I think what I love about Ned, and what I connect with, you know, with Ned, is the fact that he is essentially us. Essentially myself. Because he's a normie. He's a human who doesn't really have magic. And I think that in his sort of world, magic is sort of an escape for him. It kind of gives him some sort of power over his life that seems otherwise missing, like lacking something. And I think that we look for that same thing in, you know, books, music, movies, um, creating things, you know, in various parts of our lives, we look for a way to kind of escape to make something more out of what we are given in life. And I think that's what he's trying to do with magic. So that's why I like Ned Tuttle. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the importance of these side characters and stuff at the end. But first I just want to talk about the side characters themselves. I love Ned's enthusiasm. He kind of reminds me of that guy on, what is it? I think it might be like Animal Planet or something. There's this guy that builds tree houses, like really extravagant tree houses. And he's just so excited about what he does. And he reminds me of Ned. Like if I try to picture Ned Tuttle, I picture that guy. And I'll try to post a picture of that guy somewhere because I love that guy. He's so excited about everything that he does. And Ned gets so excited about the tiniest bit of maybe magic or tiniest item that might have magic, you know, connected with it in some way or another. So I definitely love Ned Tuttle. I love me some Ned Tuttle. Next I want to talk about a book that immediately um, came into my mind when I decided to do this video. And that is... Grayson from Thunderhead. So Thunderhead is the sequel to Scythe by Neil Shusterman. The first book, Scythe, actually focuses on two apprentices that are trying to become Scythes. They're students of that. Um, and in this universe, you know, science has kind of advanced to the point where people don't really die. Um, they can be kind of revived. They do die. So population control becomes a problem. And Scythes are the only ones that can permanently kill someone. Um, so it, it follows a lot in the Scythedom and those kind of people, but it doesn't talk a lot about people that are, you know, in danger of being gleaned, which is the permanent killing. Um, it doesn't really talk about people outside of that sort of role. So I love that Thunderhead does. There's a person in Thunderhead called Grayson who was essentially raised by the Thunderhead. And in the Thunderhead itself in the series is kind of like if the cloud evolved into this whole other thing, became kind of intelligent stuff like that and so since population control is a problem and people keep having kids and living so long a lot of times they'll have kids and then they'll kind of not want them anymore and then those kids are raised by the thunderhead grayson is one of those kids he's just a plain dude who was raised by the thunderhead he kind of gets thrown into the situation you kind of get to see the effect of the sights on the society through grayson's eyes and you kind of see something a little bit different because in a lot of fantasy and sci-fi you see kind of these extraordinary people that are in the situation and you don't kind of see the effect of those people and you know the events happening on just the average 
the average Ned. <laughs> That's why I like it. That's gonna be the title of this video, Average Ned. Next I want to talk about a character from The Cruel Prince. Um, this is by Holly Black and the character is Vivi. Um, the main character is Jude. Vivi is her sister. Jude is a human. Vivi is like a fae or a half fae. I think she's a half fae. And um, I think what's interesting is technically Vivi is not a human so she you, you wouldn't think that she's average but in the world they're kind of in fairy, so the humans are kind of the extraordinary ones. Well, they're not extraordinary, but they're different. You know, they set apart somehow. Whereas, you know, the Fae are kind of blending in with all the other Fae. And in this book, Vivi is not really anything extraordinary. She doesn't really do anything super special. She's not really a huge plot point, even though she is technically the reason that they're in fairy, Things like that. Uh, that's not really a spoiler at the very beginning. Um, so... I like Vivi though because she actually has some support for, you know, her sister. She has support for them. Um, and you kind of get to see a little glimpse into one of the Fae because you kind of spend the entire book in kind of the viewpoint of the human in Fairy. And she's kind of a Fairy in Fairy. Even though she wasn't raised there, she kind of still wants to be a human. And she's, she's kind of average in that she doesn't really use any of her really Fae stuff the fey benefits you know on anybody she doesn't use it for evil like a lot of the evil fey do so now the next three are a little bit different um in that the characters i'm going to talk about aren't super small characters i guess in the series i mean technically grayson's not small because he has his own point of view in thunderhead um but these are you'll see the next character is asher in the giver asher is a friend of i think jonas is his name jonas the main character asher is his kind of best friend and even though asher is not experiencing these kind of extraordinary things that jonas is as the receiver in this book um asher kind of serves as a comparison in this book so he's kind of you know the ideal member of this kind of dystopian utopia <laughs> And um, he's kind of going along with everything the way he's supposed to. And you kind of can compare Jonas's experiences to Asher's experiences um, and how you're supposed to act in that society versus how um, Jonas is kind of behaving in the society. Um, but I think it's interesting the role that Asher ends up playing in this, even though he is an average person, he's not seeing the same things that Jonas is. Most of the things that he is told by Jonah, he actually kind of has to take with some faith because otherwise it wouldn't make any sense to him. So now we have one that's going to be a little difficult, uh, and that is Harry Potter. So it's hard to pinpoint side characters in Harry Potter because a lot of the side characters in Harry Potter are so well developed that they don't really feel like side characters or bit characters. But a couple of them I'm going to mention are Molly Weasley. She is not really one of the main primary characters. Um, but she's just an average mom in... It's hard to call her average because she's a kind of a badass. Molly's just kind of this average wizard mom and she's just trying to take care of her kids while, you know, the whole wizarding world is exploding in on itself. The Dark Lord's returning. Um, wizards and other creatures are mcfreaking losing it all that good stuff so she's kind of provides just you know how someone that's trying to get by in the society while you know the chosen one and his little gang of peeps are you know trying to do their thing harry potter's hard because a lot of them are a lot of the characters in here are side characters because there's just so many of them um but they they end up having their own sort of way of working into the storyline um, none of them are, you know, underdeveloped or anything, but I, I think they're all very unique and they kind of provide different points of view. Like, you know, you have, you have the basic, you know, you have Molly, you have Ron's dad that is, you know, obsessed with human stuff, which we think is normal, but to them it's not normal, so it's extravagant. Um, you have Xenophilius Lovegood, who is, a, you know, just quirky fella and I enjoy him too. All the side characters are very, you know, interesting because you get to kind of see a world outside of these main three it's not all about them the world is not all about them even though he's the chosen one and he's kind of all this pressure is resting on his shoulders he's not the only one impacted by what is going on in the world and you really get to see that in the other characters the losses that they suffer the things that happen to their families the the changes that you know go they go through the development the development oh my gosh Draco's development if you think about it Neville Longbottom's development they all develop so much in these books just based on all the terrible things that are kind of going on around them um and that I think is part of the 
you know, something that's really good about Harry Potter. And now the last thing I'm going to talk about is actually something that's really impactful. And the whole point is that you're following somebody who's super average, and that is the Lord of the Rings books. The main character, Frodo Baggins, is supposed to be this average guy, and but I don't want to focus on him because he is the protagonist. So I actually want to talk about Samwise Gamgee. He is so loyal. He's basically a Hufflepuff. He is so loyal to Frodo throughout the series, and you kind of get to see what it's like for an average person to just be thrown in to this adventure. I know Frodo was an average person thrown into this adventure, but he had, you know, some, you know, choices made there while Samwise is just trying to be loyal to Frodo. Um, it's not, he's not the center of this situation. He's not experiencing the ring. He's just there for the, the ride. And he has to, again, something that happens with a lot of these side characters, they have to have some kind of faith in this protagonist to sort of get through the story. And I think that's interesting. The whole point of making this video is to highlight some of my favorite side characters because I love side characters. I put a lot of my attention on them when they pop up because they do provide us with a sort of baseline for how a normal individual might be in the situation, the society, this world, and then we have that comparison, you know, for the protagonist and the other kind of more important characters in the book, even though I feel these side characters are actually very important because they provide that for us. They show the real impact in an average being of whatever situation is going on, whether it be a tragedy, um, some weird world changing event, any kind of um, turmoil or, you know, warfare, anything that happens, you kind of see the normal effect that it has on the average being in the society. If you just have this super powerful protagonist, then you, you don't really, you don't really see how powerful they are because you don't have anything to compare it to. And it's kind of like, why do we care? You have to have some kind of reason to care you know, about how powerful they are. So seeing these average people gives us that, gives us a reason to sort of care. And on top of it all, these these characters, the Neds of the book worlds, are hashtag relatable. And I feel like that is kind of one of the main things that I like about them. But that's all I have to say. This is my list of average Neds. Um, <laughs> my fave side characters and all that good stuff. I don't know why I did this, but I really, I just really like discussion videos. So I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, give this video a like, a thumbs up, all that good stuff. And if you'd like more of this junk, subscribe below. Bye! Dripping over shadows and I'm drowning in the night I feel the soldiers coming and I'm pulling up a fight I feel my eyelids closing under